Hello, this is a great honor to have this chance to present our research at the AAG conference. The paper titled Discretized Irish Function and Body Forces generalized the notion of polyhedral Irish Function to incorporate body forces. My name is Yu Zhou Zhang, a PhD candidate at Delft University of Technology. The authors also include Pim Boskamolan and Andrew Bohart. The Irish's function is tightly connected with geometry, especially the graphic status and the Maxwell's reciprocal diagram. On your left, you can see an example of graphic statics. It's a chain hanging three way below it, where the green arrows indicate the internal forces. The equilibrium of each node can be confirmed by a closed polygon. For instance, the red node in the form diagram and the corresponding red triangle in the force diagram. The equilibrium can also be expressed by the Irish stress function. In the upper row, there are top and isometric views of an Irish stress function, f of x and y. The third dimension f is just for visualizing the graph of the function. Only the x and y axis are physical dimensions. In this imaginative 3D space, an edge in the polyhedral Irish's function represents a bars of the 2D structure. A planar face is an empty space between bars. More importantly, the slope differences at an edge is proportional to the force of the bar. This feature can be checked by Maxwell's reciprocal diagram, in which the slopes of a face in x and y direction turn into the coordination of a point in the cosy and eta dimension, and vice versa. If we divide a face into two and gradually rotate one face of them, the slope of these two faces become more distinct, the corresponding points gradually drift apart. And the reciprocal diagram phi of cosy and eta is exactly the 90 degree rotation of the force diagram in the graphic static. Apart from the discrete stress function, a smooth area stress function can characterize a smooth stress tensor field. Here's a disk subject to compression forces. When this smooth stress function is approximated by a triangle mesh, the distributed stresses condense into forces. On your right, the blue bars are compression forces, the rays are tension. One can also use a principal mesh to approximate the same stress function, so that the principal stresses become more clearly visible. Once a smooth area stress function is discretized, a continuous material is also discretized into a thrust-like structure. A vertex on the polyhedral surface is a node of the truss. An edge is a bar, a face is a void. This discretization can work for any 2D structure subject to contact forces, such as the green compression that is applied at the boundary of the domain. But it is still unknown how to incorporate body forces, which are the force that directly applied to the element within the boundary. We just went through the introduction. In the following presentation, my colleague Pim Boskamolan will more analytically brief you on some key notions of Irish's function and body forces. With those insight, in the third session, I will walk you through how to discretize them, as well as propose extended definition for principal meshes. In the fourth section, we use the principal meshes to discretize the stress function of a Simply support beam. Finally, this presentation ends with conclusion and future works. Hello, I am Bimbus Kumaran. First, I'll show you how both smooth and discrete area stress functions work in the absence of body forces. Then, I'll present how a smooth area stress function handles body forces, and I'll provide you with the crucial strategy for discretizing stress functions to include body forces. In the absence of body forces, the normal stresses and the shear stresses must satisfy the two differential equations on the top left to reach equilibrium. At first sight, it seems to be a rather complicated system of equations. However, 
Once the stresses are derived from the second derivatives of a scalar function, the equilibrium conditions are automatically satisfied. An example is shown here on the right. f is proportional to y cubed, which is only curved in the vertical direction. This means that the stress field only has stresses in the horizontal direction. The external forces and the internal compressive forces are visualized on the bottom right. Once the smooth stress function is discretized into planar phases, the second derivatives turn to zero at most of the places, but concentrate at the edges. As shown in the example, the second derivative with respect to y is infinite at the edges, but the integral is finite. So we use del direct delta functions to express the integrated values. The distances between the bold black lines and the xy plane are proportional to the integrated curvatures or the dihedral angles, which also means they are proportional to the integrated stresses or the forces. And the figure on the bottom right shows the bars that take up compressive forces. Well, in the, in the presence of the body forces Px and Py, the equilibrium equations as shown on the left have to be considered. A smooth stress function can also incorporate body forces. In that case, the normal stresses are the second derivative of f minus the integrals of the body forces. On the right, the figures show the same stress function of y cubed as before, but now with body forces in y direction. The resulting stress field is actually like that of a hydrostatic stress distribution, in which pressure is linearly proportional to the depth. Before figuring out how to discretize stress functions with body forces, we have to sum up some key observations. Firstly, the conventional polyhedral area stress function has second derivatives that are equal to zero in phases and are infinite at edges and nodes. Secondly, stresses are the second derivatives minus integrals of body forces. To effectively discretize the stress function, the stress function will have zero stresses in the phases or voids, but will not necessarily have zero curvature. In the third section, you too will explain the method that we propose to discretize body forces, and he will show how to curve the area stress function to make sure there are no stresses in the voids. Then he will explain how to define principal meshes with curved panels. The body force might apply it on any point within the domain for a continuous structure. But for a truss-like structure, the body force should not act on the voids since there is no material to carry on these forces. Therefore, the forces can only apply at bars or nodes. We choose the bars to bear the body forces. Subsequently, the integrals of body forces should be stepwise functions, and the junks between the steps are the concentrated body forces. For clear demonstration, we temporarily split the hydrostatic stress function into two independent cases. The upper row is the case that has only the horizontal stress with no body force. The discretization can take place as usual. And the bottom row has only the vertical stress. The integral of vertical body force should become a stepwise function, but it is not sure yet how the stress function should respond. Since our target is to find the stress function that leads to zero stress at most of place, we should suggest the curvature should be equal to the integral of body forces. Subsequently, we can derive that the stress function be polynomials as displayed at the bottom right. We use some corrugated shapes to meet the requirement. The corrugation has smooth curvature at most of place but also some sharp creases with intense curvatures. The discontinuity between the corrugated panels can be interpreted as bending moments. The result more or less like loads applying on some cantilever beams and the compression accumulating in the columns. When we merge these two stress functions back together, the corrugated panels will have some slopes 
and they intersect each other at some curves. The curves are sort of arches that have some horizontal thrust and transmit the vertical body forces into the column. The arches and the columns seem to be a delicate structure system. However, we did not invent this structure, which are spotted through the length of discrete differential geometry. Regarding the definition of non-planar isotropic principal meshes, the crucial idea is that these principal meshes can visualize the principal stresses when they are applied to every stress function. Two types of non-planar isotropic principal meshes are mentioned here, which are circular mesh and conical meshes. The written definition here seems to be complicated. We should provide you some figurative example instead. The discretized function of the hydrostatics is a circular mesh and a conical mesh at the same time. Here shows you the two pairs of reciprocal diagram. They have different values in the constants of integration, but they mean the same hydrostatic pressure. While the left one has self-intersecting reciprocal diagram, the right one is more clearly to read. Both of these two versions are circular meshes. As you can find, all the faces have vertices on a common isotropic sphere of cylindrical type. Regarding the conical mesh, it will be much easier to check in the reciprocal diagram. A vertex in the xy domain meets the conical criterion if and only if the vertex maps to an isotropic concilic polygon. For detailed discussion, please consult our paper. Here we show the stress function of a simply support beam, which has reinforced boundaries at its end. This stress function can be interpreted as all the loads are contact force acting on the top edge, or in another low case, there is no contact force, but some vertical body force applied throughout the domain of L by H. Then, in the first loading case, the stress function can be discretized into the planar circular mesh, as shown here. In the second loading case, the non-planar circular mesh should be used. The top edge has curved faces that are continuously in slopes, which leave in zero dihedral angles across the vertical edges. We can move our viewpoints around the functions and render the discretized function as reflective surface to observe the crease angles. Since the curvature of the faces have faithfully matched the body forces, we can directly read the force distribution through the crease's angle without checking the body forces. Or we can also compute the crease angles and draw the pipes with the diameter proportional to the values. The tension forces are shown in red and compression forces in blue. As you can see, the same stress function under different interpretation or different discretization can show different stress distribution. This final demonstration brings our presentation to a close. To recap and conclude this presentation, firstly, we have developed a method to incorporate body forces in discretized area stress functions, in which the non-planar phases have curvatures corresponding to integrals of body forces. Secondly, a single discretized Eurystress function can contain information of three functions, the two integrals of body forces and the smooth Eurystress function. With this discretization technique, we believe it can serve a better method to visualize planar stresses. However, some experiments should be made to compare these techniques with others and to validate if this method can help students or structural designer to perceive the stress flow better. My name is Xu Zhou Jiang. My name is Pim Buskemolen. Should you have any comments or suggestions, please do not hesitate to connect with us or send us an email for any further discussion. Or follow my blog for any upcoming progress. Thank you.